A new FDA warning has just been published, and it's making headlines. Several well-known sunscreen companies have been told to stop selling their trendy mousse or whipped cream sunscreens. They look fun and lightweight, but the FDA says they aren't officially approved and may not offer the protection they claimed. So let's go over what the FDA found, which products were involved, which companies, and what this means for your skin safety. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Maria Zizian, a board-certified general surgeon and an IFM-certified functional medicine physician. On this channel, I share health tips on skin health, food and supplements, functional medicine, surgery, and the latest medical research to help you feel your best. And if that sounds good, please like, share with your friends and family, and subscribe. So why the FDA got involved? And by the way, the link to this Medscape article is in the description of this video. So most people think of sunscreen as skincare, but legally it's an over-the-counter drug. And that's because sunscreen isn't just for cosmetic purposes. It's actually designed to prevent sunburn, to slow premature skin aging and reduce the risk of skin cancer. So to protect consumers, the FDA regulates sunscreen ingredients and product types. So currently approved forms include creams, lotions, gels, sticks, sprays, ointments, powders, and pastes. But mousse or whipped sunscreens aren't on that list. And that means companies selling them must first go through a new drug application, NDA, a process proving that the product is safe, effective, and accurately labeled. And since that didn't happen, the FDA classified these as unapproved and misbranded drugs. So what did the FDA find? So the FDA reviewed these mousse sunscreens and found two major issues. First, because they've never been officially tested, there is no way to confirm if the SPF number on the label is accurate. And to remind you, SPF stands for sun protection factor, and it measures how well a sunscreen shields your skin from UVB rays, the one that cause sunburn and contribute to skin cancer. For example, an SPF 30, theoretically, allows you to stay in the sun 30 times longer without burning, but only if the formula is tested and stable. Secondly, some of these products look almost identical to whipped cream cans. So the FDA raised concerns that children could accidentally ingest them, mistaking them for food. So official warning letters were sent out to several companies advising them to stop marketing and or selling these products until they go through proper testing. So you may ask why the sunscreen formulation is so important. Why does it matter? Well, even if a mousse sunscreen lists familiar active ingredients like zinc oxide or able benzone, what truly matters is the formulation base or vehicle. That base determines how evenly the sunscreen spreads and how tightly it adheres to your skin. So when the texture is changed, say from a cream to a foam, it alters how the UV filters behave. That can create uneven coverage and weak spots where your skin isn't fully protected. Experts, including dermatologists interviewed by Medscape Medical News, emphasize that since these products skip the standard testing process, their SPF claims may not reflect the real-world protection. So let's talk about the brands that have been noted by FDA and what it means for you. So according to the FDA website and Medscape Medical News, warning letters were issued in August 2025 to five manufacturers of mousse or whipped style sunscreens. And please note that this only applies to the mousse or foams products of these companies and not all of their other products. So number one, we have Super Cool. Number two, Vacation Ink. Number three, Stellion Cosmeceuticals. Number four, Kalani Sunwear. Number five, K and Care Organics. Each of these products was classified as misbranded and unapproved because mousse or whipped formulations aren't currently recognized under the FDA sunscreen standards. And this could eventually push the FDA to review whether mousse or foam sunscreens may be added to future regulations, but only if the companies conduct proper safety and SPF testing. Perhaps 
these are great products and we will end up recommending them but however it is unknown now if you have been using one of these whipped or mousse sunscreens don't panic but understand that we just don't have data confirming if they work so when your sunscreen fails uv damage happens silently at first and then it builds up over time and that's of course what causes photo aging wrinkles pigmentation and increases your risk for skin cancers like basal and squamous cell carcinoma and of course melanoma so while these new foamy textures may feel pleasant the protection they provide is uncertain so what do i recommend until new testing is done i join other experts and recommend sticking to fda approved formulations you actually can trust and here's what to look for broad spectrum coverage and it protects against both uva aging and uvb burning rays then of course choose spf 30 or higher it's proven to significantly reduce the risk of skin damage and approved formats are creams lotions sticks or sprays and if you have sensitive or acne prone skin mineral sunscreens with zinc oxide or titanium dioxide are great options they're gentle effective and safe for daily use and i would like to add to it also baby sunscreen they're also good for sensitive skin in conclusion innovations in skincare are always exciting however when it comes to sunscreen safety and regulation must come first a sunscreen only protects you if it's scientifically tested and accurately labeled so until mousse or whipped sunscreens are properly reviewed stick to trusted fda approved products that have been proven to prevent sunburn and reduce your risk of skin cancer remember sunscreen isn't just about beauty it's your body's most important daily defense against sun damage and premature aging i hope you enjoyed this video looking forward to reading your comments please like share subscribe thank you so much until next time